The next question has to do with vitamin C. And the question is, is it true that high dose intravenous vitamin C may help treat COVID-19? So first of all, there's no published data looking at the effect of intravenous vitamin C on COVID-19. So I cannot speak specifically to whether or not intravenous vitamin C may help treat COVID-19. There is a randomized placebo-controlled trial that began in China on February 14th, investigating the effect of high-dose intravenous vitamin C on severe COVID-19 infected pneumonia. The study will treat severe COVID-19 patients with 12 grams of intravenous vitamin C twice a day for a total of 24 grams of intravenous vitamin C for seven days. The trial is expected to be completed by September 30th uh, of 2020. There is some anecdotal evidence from correspondence from physicians in China um, that have been using intravenous vitamin C to treat complications associated with COVID-19. These correspondences are not peer-reviewed. They're essentially anecdotes from, from physicians that have been posted on websites. Uh, for example, uh, one physician in China um, used, was treating uh, 50 cases of moderate to severe COVID-19 with high intravenous vitamin C the dose ranging from 10 to 20 grams a day for seven to 10 days uh, with 10 grams for moderate cases and 20 grams for the more severe cases. The pulmonary status and uh, coagulation status was the determining factor for the severity of COVID-19. All patients who received the intravenous vitamin C, uh, according to the anecdote, improved and there was no mortality compared to the average of a 30-day hospital stay for COVID-19 patients, those patients who received high-dose intravenous vitamin C had a hospital stay about three to five days shorter than the overall patients. Again, that is anecdotal data, so there's, there's really no conclusions that can be made from, from that data. But what we can speak a little bit more about today is published data on the use of intravenous vitamin C for infections, uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome and sepsis. Um, both acute respiratory distress syndrome and sepsis can be complications associated with severe COVID-19 illness. So let's start by talking about the difference between intravenous versus oral vitamin C bioavailability. Intravenous vitamin C bypasses intestinal absorption and the saturatable transport mechanism. So consequently, the bioavailability of vitamin C differs appreciably between oral and intravenous administration. So for example, in healthy adults, intravenous administration of vitamin C might reach blood level concentrations that are anywhere between 30 to 70 times higher than the same oral dose. In one clinical study in which 12 adults between the ages of 19 and 27 were administered 1.25 grams of vitamin C either orally or intravenously, peak plasma concentrations reached 135 micromoles per liter of blood and 885 micromoles per liter of blood respectively. Furthermore, a high dose of 3 grams taken every 4 hours resulted in peak blood concentrations of 220 micromoles per liter compared to 1,760 micromole per liter for a single three gram dose of intravenous vitamin C. Let's talk a little bit about the use of intravenous vitamin C for the treatment of sepsis and acute respiratory distress syndrome, which as I mentioned earlier, are both complications of severe COVID-19. Sepsis is a potentially life-threatening condition caused by the body's innate immune response to acute infection. Under some circumstances, aspects of this response that are typically associated with defense against infection can induce extensive cell and tissue damage, leading to multiple organ failure, the hallmark of sepsis. Acute respiratory distress syndrome, also known as acute lung injury, is a serious lung condition that causes low blood oxygen. It is a common sepsis-associated injury, and it can lead to respiratory failure and death. People diagnosed with sepsis typically have low vitamin C levels, which might be predictive of increased risk for organ failure. Evidence suggests intravenous vitamin C might be an effective treatment for sepsis. A 2019 Phase two clinical trial found that intravenous vitamin C reduced mortality in patients with sepsis and acute respiratory distress syndrome. The randomized double-blind placebo-controlled 
multi-center trial took place in seven medical intensive care units in the United States over a period of three years. The study participants included 167 male and female participants with sepsis and acute respiratory distress syndrome. Every six hours for four days, the patients received either intravenous vitamin C, 50 milligrams per kilogram of body weight, or placebo. The authors of the study noted a substantial difference in the death rates for the two groups, whereas approximately 30% of patients who received the intravenous vitamin C died, more than 46% of patients who took the placebo died. Patients who received vitamin C had fewer ventilated days, spent less time in intensive care, seven days versus 10, and their hospital stays were approximately one week shorter than those who received the placebo. These findings suggest that intravenous vitamin C administration might be beneficial in critically ill patients who have sepsis. A separate study treated 47 patients with 6 grams of intravenous vitamin C four times per day for four days along with a steroid medication and vitamin B1, thiamine. A control group of 47 patients identified as having similar baseline characteristics of sepsis when admitted to the intensive care unit received standard of care. The death rate in the treated group was only 8.5% compared to 40.4% in the control group. In addition, the treated group exhibited improved organ function compared to the control group. These studies suggest that intravenous vitamin C alone or in combination with other treatments like thiamine decrease the risk of organ failure and mortality in patients diagnosed with sepsis. There have been several other studies that have successfully used intravenous vitamin C and thiamine for the treatment of sepsis. For the past several decades, intravenous vitamin C has been used as an effective antiviral agent for the treatment of multiple types of viral infections, including myocarditis, Epstein-Barr virus, and others. Furthermore, some studies have observed that in critically ill patients, such as those with viral infections, plasma levels of vitamin C might be less than 25% of those observed in healthy people. Intravenous vitamin C's effectiveness in treating viral infections is likely due to its ability to enhance the immune system and also due to its ability to directly produce hydrogen peroxide, which we'll discuss in a minute. Immune cells such as lymphocytes and neutrophils actively participate in eliminating pathogens such as bacteria or viruses from the body. Vitamin C is highly concentrated in immune cells with neutrophils and leukocytes having between 50 to 100 times higher vitamin C concentrations than plasma. One of the early stages of the body's immune response to viral or bacterial infection involves neutrophil infiltration into affected tissue, where the cells engulf the pathogens and initiate their removal. Neutrophils also generate large quantities of reactive oxygen species. The high levels of vitamin C found in immune cells protect the neutrophils from reactive oxygen species induced DNA damage while also promoting neutrophil ROS production. Studies in humans have shown that vitamin C can enhance neutrophil function in young men between the ages of 18 to 30, as well as in older women. In addition, studies in guinea pigs suggest that vitamin C plays an important role in facilitating neutrophil migration to sites of infection. Vitamin C also appears to boost the immune system by promoting the proliferation of T-cells and preventing T-cell death. T-cells play a major role in driving an immune response against pathogens such as bacteria or viruses. Multiple in vitro studies in both mouse and human cell lines have demonstrated that growing T-cells in culture with vitamin C might enhance T-cell development. While vitamin C acts primarily as an antioxidant at physiological concentrations of approximately 50 micromoles per liter, pharmacologic doses of intravenous vitamin C greater than one gram generates hydrogen peroxide, a type of reactive oxygen species that can damage DNA, RNA, and proteins, leading to tissue damage. Multiple in vitro and in vivo studies suggest that high-dose intravenous vitamin C leads to the formation of hydrogen peroxide. But it is important to note that successive treatments with high-dose intravenous vitamin C has not been shown to increase pro-oxidative markers in healthy individuals, suggesting that while the high-dose intravenous vitamin C may produce hydrogen peroxide, and this hydrogen peroxide may be killing other pathogens such as viruses or other um, 
you know, unhealthy cells such as cancer cells, uh, normal cells are not damaged by the burst of hydrogen peroxide produced by the high dose of intravenous vitamin C. Vitamin C also interferes directly with the replication of viral particles. Let's briefly discuss intravenous vitamin C safety. Intravenous vitamin C is pretty well tolerated and has low toxicity. The most commonly reported side effects include mild to moderate nausea, headache, and dry mouth, with less commonly reported side effects being fatigue, hypertension, loss of appetite, and hyperglycemia. Some serious side effects have been reported with high-dose intravenous vitamin C in patients with cancer. Additionally, people who have a deficiency in the enzyme glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase could be at risk of hemolysis, uh, the rupturing of red blood cells when given high doses of intravenous vitamin C. Although these studies suggest that vitamin C could be contraindicated in these conditions, the intravenous doses administered were 40 grams or higher, which is pretty high. Other case reports have indicated that when given a dose between 1 to 10 grams, intravenous vitamin C actually reduced uh, hemolysis. So it's possible that at lower doses, intravenous vitamin C is safe in people with glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency, but patients should definitely exert caution and be pre-screened for this deficiency before receiving a high dose of intravenous vitamin C.